pictured here on our uh, cover slide is uh, two of our underground samplers uh, chipping away at some multi kilogram per ton silver ore from our Guanacaste mine in northern Durango State, Mexico. We've entitled today's presentation "Profitable Production, Compelling Growth," and that uh, is what I'm going to pretty much stick to uh, during the uh, uh, the presentation today. I will be making some forward-looking statements, uh, so you are duly cautioned. And by way of highlights, Endeavor Silver today is a mid-tier producer of gold and silver. We own and operate three high-grade underground silver gold mines throughout Mexico. And there's really four key catalysts to create value, both short and long-term for our shareholders. Uh, first and foremost, being an operating company, we have in recent years really focused on reducing our operating costs in order to boost free cash flow. And we've done so very successfully a great year last year. We obviously uh, plan to continue optimizing our mining operations going forward. Perhaps the most obvious way to differentiate Endeavor from the pack of silver producing companies uh, is our organic growth profile, best in sector, with not one but two new discoveries awaiting development in Mexico uh, to grow both our reserve uh, production and cash flow base. Um, thirdly, uh, all of the ore bodies we've developed, all of the mines we've put into production in the last 16 years, uh, were on the basis of virgin discoveries by our exploration group. Uh, in other words, uh, discovery and exploration is in our DNA and it's what's really driven our success as an operating company. And last but not least, even though our focus is on exploration and discovery, uh, we do from time to time pull the trigger on mergers and acquisitions in order to build up our asset base. Last but not least, because we produce only silver and gold, we're one of the very few silver producers to be dominantly silver and 100% silver and gold. Uh, we do have a sector leading leverage or beta of our share price, to the silver price. So headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, all of our core assets located in Mexico and with a portfolio of world-class exploration projects in Northern Chile. Endeavor currently employs about 2,200 employees and contractors. I'll be focusing today on just one of our mines, the first and largest silver mine, Guanacaste in Durango State, and also on our, our first and largest development project, the Terranera discovery in Jalisco State. Some recent highlights, uh, we just came off uh, our best quarter in two years, producing 2.1 million ounces of silver and equivalents, the only equivalent being gold. That's a 21% increase year on year. Uh, we did achieve our 2020 production guidance of six and a half million ounces of silver equivalents, notwithstanding a two month shutdown of our operations, government mandated suspension uh, due to the COVID pandemic. Uh, we've recently agreed to sell one of our dormant assets, the El Cubo line, uh, to another junior company, Van Gold, for $15 million, uh, in cash and shares plus additional payments. That uh, should close here shortly. And if you look at uh, even at the end of September, our year-on-year -year financial performance was uh, significantly improved with our Q3 cash costs down 68% to $3.69 per ounce silver net of the gold credit. And our all-in sustaining costs down 19% to $17.48 per ounce silver. Our operating cash flow in Q3 jumped 400% to over $10 million. And our Q3 uh, end of quarter cash position grew to $45 million with working capital of $54 million. Uh, because of our uh, spectacular performance in Q4, uh, we can safely say that all of those numbers will increase uh, that is the cash flow and cash and working capital uh, at year end. We continued our exploration drilling last year. Brownfield's exploration was successful at replacing our reserves and expanding our resources, uh, largely due to significant increases at Guanacaste from the high grade Alcurso discovery. And we just published our updated reserves and resources with uh, reserves of 86 million ounces silver equivalents. Um, and uh, with uh, uh, measured and indicated resources of 87 million ounces silver equivalents. On the chart right, you can see our, our revenue mix is approximately 50-50 silver gold 
last year, and it's about the same again this year. And uh, on the upper right, uh, the pie chart showing uh, the contribution of each of our mines. Buenos Aires is obviously our largest mine. Looking to 2021, uh, our production this year is forecast to be slightly higher. Our cash flow should be significantly higher thanks to the tailwind on metal prices. Our costs will drift a little bit higher due mainly to higher royalties and, and, and uh, taxes, mining duties, uh, which is a function partly of metal prices. And um, our Terra Nera feasibility study uh, is expected by mid-year, which should facilitate a board decision to develop our next core asset uh, in the mid-summer. Uh, our uh, exploration program at another development project, Peral, uh, this year is focused on expanding resources. And we have a program in Northern Chile uh, focusing on world-class discoveries. So let's turn our attention now to the, uh, the core assets. I'll just talk about one of the operating mines, uh, Guanacivi. Our first mine acquired in 2004, came to production in January of 2005. Um, it's our largest silver mine. It's the richest silver mine by grade, and it's the only silver mine where we uh, produce story bars and, and ultimately refine those bars into pure bullion. Uh, that allows us uh, on a week by week basis to, de to decide whether to sell or not sell our weekly production. At Guano City, and after some very tough years in 2017, 2018, uh, we focused on uh, turning around the operation 2019 and 2020. And year on year, uh, last year, our production as a result of the operational turnaround was up 49%. Our grades were up 32% and throughput was up 15%. That operational turnaround is now complete and the mine is operating close to its 1200 ton per day capacity. You can see on the kind of uh, chart left, uh, the rising tons per day from the mine to plant and the rising grades per ton uh, from 312 grams uh, a year ago to 412 grams in the most recent quarter. So all of that adds up to uh, reduced cash costs, increases in productivity and uh, an improved work culture as our group at the site uh, recognize that their efforts are uh, gaining traction. On the chart right, you can see that obviously with uh, better performance at the mine, production rises quarter on quarter. Let's turn our attention now to our largest development project, the uh, fully permitted and, and uh, really shovel ready uh, Terra Nera project in Jalisco State. Uh, Terra Nera truly has large and low cost mine potential. It is our next core asset. Once it's up and running, it will effectively double our production and half our costs. It's that special, that important to our future. Um, Terra Nera is a district scale opportunity. Uh, we control over 20,000 hectares and, and it covers the entire district, historic district of San Sebastian with over 50 old mines now mapped on over 50 ore bearing vein structures. Uh, the property is only an hour and a half drive on pavement from the resort city of Puerto Vallarta. So what we envisage at uh, Terra Nera is the construction of a 6 million ounce per year uh, silver equivalent mine, that's 3 million ounces of silver and 33,000 ounces of gold for a minimum 10 year mine life. And that's based on two di uh, discoveries, the Terra Nera discovery and the La Luz discovery shown on the map right. And uh, uh, totaling about uh, 80 million ounces of combined reserve and resource of which 66 million ounces is proven and improbable reserves. The two green blocks on the map right are recent acquisitions to expand our land position and add yet more veins for future drilling. If you look at the economic studies uh, we've completed, most recently last July, we the final pre-feasibility study, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, based on that 6 million ounce per year mine for a 10 year mine life with an uh, initial capex or capital expenditure of $100 million. Um, uh, results in, uh, even at significantly lower uh, metal prices, some very robust uh, financial metrics. At $16 silver and $1,400 gold, uh, we end up with a net present value after tax of $137 million, generating an after tax internal rate of return of 30% on the capital invested with a payback period of 2.7 years. Jump forward though to the uh, 
uh, current prices. Uh, and uh, it, it's a, a magical what the uh, higher prices do to our financial performance on this asset with the NPV multiplying almost two and a half fold to $350 million, the IRR doubling to 65%, the payback period shrinking to just barely one year and the, the annual uh, after tax free cash flow of uh, $57 million. So a very special opportunity for the company. I would be remiss in um, uh, moving away from our projects without touching on what we're doing in Northern Chile. You know, many people have commented to me over the years, um, why is a high grade underground Mexican producer exploring for big open pit discoveries in Northern Chile? The answer is really simple. Um, we've pretty much reached the limit of uh, growth uh, using our business model of uh, small, but very high grade uh, silver gold deposits in historic districts in Mexico. And in order to climb the ladder from mid-tier producer to senior producer, we felt we had to add to our uh, exploration portfolio uh, world-class prospects. So here portrayed uh, in, uh, in the photographs are uh, three spectacular projects uh, that we staked in the bear market. I mean, literally uh, open ground available for staking. The upper left with the red pickup truck is the one we're, that we're currently drilling. It's called the Paloma Project. It's a high sulfidation gold silver project. Target there is about 5 million ounces silver, sorry, gold equivalent ounces. And um, the uh, alteration zone portrayed uh, measures about four by uh, two kilometers. And we're focusing on about a one by one kilometer area right in the middle of it. Currently being drilled hopefully results by the end of the quarter. The second project on the lower left with the horse, uh, that's our porphyry copper gold project, Cerro Marquez. And uh, we've done enough work now at this project to convince ourselves that uh, it's too big for us and that we should seek a copper major as a partner to advance Cerro Marquez. We've signed a number of confidentiality agreements and we fully expect to land a partner uh, sometime during 2021. And last but not least in the upper right, the photo with the alpaca is our, our uh, extension of the Bolivian silver belt. It's a, a multi hundred million ounce silver target there and uh, it's called AIDA. Uh, it's not yet ready for permitting. We're in the middle of the permitting process, so we hope to drill it later this year. So uh, that's the tour, quick tour, of our uh, producing, development, and exploration projects. Uh, the company currently has 157 million shares issued, trading at about uh, $5.5 US. What's that? Six and a half Canadian. Uh, so we're around an 800 million US market cap, 1.1 billion dollars Canadian uh, with daily liquidity of about 6 million shares. So very uh, liquid stock. We're trading on the big board in Toronto, EDR, and the big board on the New York Stock Exchange, EXK. I've already touched on our cash and working capital. One major shareholder uh, has a 6% position. That's the Banek GDXJ Index Fund. And one strategic shareholder, Presneo PLC, uh, the world's largest silver mining company, has a 2% toehold in the stock. Um, 10 analysts cover the stock. And again, uh, we have a sector le uh, leading beta uh, to silver.